Didn't that ladies' choir sound great? They looked great too, didn't it? All right, let's give them another round of applause. Thank you so much, ladies. Uh, and we are, we are blessed today. Uh, first of all, you don't have to listen to me. That's just a blessing in and of itself. But uh, we, are, we have some, some ladies that have uh, invested their lives in ministering in this community and, and to this church, to this faith community that we call Westfield Baptist Church. And they are, they are here today to share a little bit of um, some of what you've shared with them, but as well as what they've seen through the years. But we're going to start with, uh, with one of our, our all-stars, um, a lady who to many of us needs no introduction, but to some of you who have, have not been fortunate enough to, to know this lady and by extension to come to love this lady, uh, you are in for a real treat. I want to introduce to you this morning my sister in Christ, my friend, a mentor and a leader uh, for this church through many decades, Mary Ellen Midkiff. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. I thought the next time that I would be in this church at this place, I would be in my little box up here. And I'm so glad that I didn't have to wait that long. I've got my children and my grandchildren here, and, uh, and I, all of you just feel right at welcome, right welcome that Westfield Baptist Church came down that road again from Mount Airy. Wasn't quite as fast as when Thurman used to bring me down. <laughs> But we got down all right. <laughs> uh, I, I do go back a long way, and I want you to know that in June I'll be 90, 90 years old. Thank you. I've been coming here a long time. I was born just out the road, and I guess it's the fire department there now. It was John Hunter's store when I was born there, and... Uh, I have been coming here ever since. Uh, that was that was ninety. Will be ninety years in June that I'll be coming here to church. Uh, the church building was finished the year that I was born, nineteen and twenty-seven. That's a long time, isn't it? I've been coming through those doors a long time and had a lot of things to do here. Uh, the, my first memories of coming to Westfield was in Bible school. Now, Bible school is my thing. Now, I know it's not uh, not all of yours because it's it's not as big and, and, and well, I, that's just me because I was leading Bible school in the association for many years and, and of course, here at Westfield for I don't know, 18 or 20 years, I guess, Bible school director. So it still sticks with me. Bible school is an important part of my life. Uh, and when this church was first built, and we had a, 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 a framed church beside of this church, and, and this was known as New Westfield. You remember that? Yeah, it was New Westfield. I guess because the Friends Church was old Westfield, and this was new Westfield. Uh, and so when we talked about coming to church, we was coming to new Westfield. Uh, my first memories of coming to Bible school as a young child, let me tell you, whenever we think of the people who are working with our young children, like at that time was Ann Laura Smith, and, and uh, they said I could, I could work in Bible school one year. And I said, okay. And, and uh, I would take the uh, young children because I thought you didn't have to know as much if you thought that. But boy, was I wrong. That's so important for our children. These young children, it's so important. And I still have them to tell me things that they learned back when they were young children. Uh, Anyway, Aunt Laura bore with me. I remember sitting about, it was about the second row back here, out on the end, 
And uh, I was scared to death because all these little children were praying, and I never had prayed in public. And I didn't know what in the world I was going to do. But I got through some way. I don't know how. The Lord helped me, I guess, as he has in everything else. Uh, but anyway, uh, my first memories of coming was, uh, of course, Roxy Payne played the piano. And we lined up out there and sang Onward Christian Soldiers. Remember that song, Onward Christian Soldiers, Marching as to War. It, we felt like we were. We were on God's side, and we were marching as to war. And uh, at that time, uh, we, uh, the Presbyterian Church had a... They didn't have anybody to lead them in, in uh, music. And so Roxy was the best, you know, the very best. And so she and Mrs. Wilson, any of you remember Mrs. Wilson from the Presbyterian Church? She was wonderful. And, and she would come and teach us our Bibles, uh, Bible, uh, uh, I guess we must have all met in here at one time because she would teach the whole group a Bible story, and it was always from the Old Testament, and she would put the emphasis on it. I thought she was so good, and she was wonderful. And uh, then uh, after, after she would come up here, and t two weeks we had, two weeks in the morning we had Bible school here, can you imagine? Uh-uh. No. It, it was wonderful to come for two whole weeks and have Roxy Payne to play the piano for us in all the classes. We were blessed. And uh, as, as she played, then she would go down to Francisco. They had two Presbyterian churches in that area, and she would play the piano for them. We borrowed their Bible uh, teacher here for the, for the big for the big Bible story. Oh, it was wonderful. One day I went home after we'd had Bible school, and uh, my grandpa Pell was there, and he read he read the Bible a lot. And I thought Grandpa would love to hear me tell him that same story I heard that morning, and and of course he said it would be all right if I told it, and I did. And when I got through, Grandpa said, Shaw, Shaw, she's going to be something someday. <laughs> and, and I kept that in my mind because Grandpa knew his Bible. And I, he knew when anybody was on the right track. And uh, I always kept that in mind that someday I would be something. And uh, so I worked through Bible school uh, teaching Bible school, and then and then went into Sunday school, and I was Sunday school director for a while. Uh, I don't know. I guess I couldn't get anybody else. But anyway, I was Sunday school director for a while, and and I taught Sunday school up through the years. Uh, and I, I remember one group I had was Becky. She was Becky Payne at the time. Uh, let's see, I wrote those names down so I wouldn't forget them. Uh, Brenda Owens, Charlene Ball, Sylvia Arrington, and Nancy K. Cook. I saw Nancy yesterday over at uh, over where I am, and uh, she's so pretty and so good. And She left here, married, uh, I think he was a Gordon, and she went to Presbyterian Church over at Hills Grove or something. And uh, we never saw Nancy back. She started playing the piano over there and, and has been there ever, and is still there playing the piano for, for them. Uh, so but if, you if I could tell a story like Ms. Wilson told, that would be wonderful. Oh, she would tell that story and, and crunch up her face and make a strange face for all those people in the story. She was good. Ms. Wilson was so good uh, from the Presbyterian Church. And then, of course, we know what they had in Roxy coming to play for them. Uh, 
she'd go down there and do their Bible school music. And we'd have it for two weeks, and I don't know about the, those churches. Uh, and, but anyway, like I said, my first experience of working in the church or teaching in the church was uh, with uh, Anna Laura Smith. And, and, and I've heard since then what a great, wonderful uh, beginner Sunday school class that, uh, that uh, Anna Laura taught. Uh, and then later on in, in the years, I was asked to be Sunday school superintendent, which, I, of course, I did. I accepted everything they offered. Uh, <laughs> and uh, some people probably would have been glad if I hadn't been so good about it. But anyway, I did. And, uh, uh, I, I, and I, after teaching this, uh, the class, The Enemy of Girls, I later taught the young adult women's class, and in the older women's class until I moved all the way up till the older women couldn't get out to church and they started doing it at home, you know, with the telephone. And I went to a meeting somewhere in the association and, and this man was there that told us about his church had started teaching uh, Bible school from his church and they could, uh, I mean, not Bible school, but, uh, but Sunday school, and they would uh, uh, teach it, and then they would have people who couldn't go to church. They would be there, and they would be in that class. And it was a wonderful class, I thought. And we were in touch with all those people that couldn't come to church. And, uh, and, and we still have that here at Westville. We have the, that older class that most of them couldn't walk. And, and they were just so thankful to be in a class with other people who were like them who didn't, didn't go to church. But anyway, that was my Sunday school years. And uh, th that oldest class, my mama was in that class and, and a lot of people her age. So I was so glad to get to be with them and talk to them. Uh, and then I was Sunday school superintendent for a while. And I attended the associational meetings and, and learned what other churches in the association was doing and we always stayed right up there with them if there was something new that came along Westfield did it that was, and then they we had uh, did you ever hear of uh, the Westfield uh, what was the name of that we had it for a while Bible verses we learned Bible verses and Bible reels and and uh, that was a uh, I don't know how long that lasted but we had it for a while. Then in 1954, we started in in the Surrey Association. They started offering uh, seminary extension classes, and they were taught by pastors who had their doctorate or seminary professors who, who came once a week and taught these classes. These were the same classes that that, that our uh, boys in the seminaries were being taught. Uh, th and thanks to, to Thurman, my husband, and my mother, I was able to go to all those things. I didn't have any excuses for staying away. Uh, and, and this church celebrated with me uh, our associational missionary, Reverend Owen Bradley. Some of you probably remember him. Some of you don't. He's been gone a little while. He came down and presented my diploma when I graduated from seminary extension and uh, and uh, then you had a reception for me. You've been good to me. Uh, Westfield has, a, has had an active WMU, Women's Missionary Union, and under them were the GAs, and they were some of these, this group that I called their name uh, a few minutes ago. I guess it's a few minutes. G Genevieve... <laughs> Genevieve Johnson helped me with the GAs, and we had we had the best GAs. They came and they learned they learned about the uh, everything that the Baptists did. They learned who was in Raleigh. Uh, I guess it was Raleigh then. It's moved now to where is it? Uh, where is it? Huh? Is it? Back in Raleigh, did they move out for a while? I, see, I'm I'm out of some of that stuff, Joel. Okay, 
So anyway, uh, I became Bible school director around 1954 and served until about 1984, count it. I was Bible school director. You put up with me for that long. Uh, Bible school was a week after school was out, and several of the teachers who, Roxy Payne, Gladys Owens, Lena Smith, Ethel Christian, they th came right out of school now, teaching in school with all those wild young'uns that week or two just before school was out, and they would come on down here, and we would have Bible school uh, every day for two weeks, uh, I mean, all the weekdays, and... Uh, we had a wonderful, that was dedication, wasn't it, for those teachers to do that. But you know, Bible school for us back in those days in the country was wonderful. We didn't have all these things going that you have today. We didn't have the little boys playing school ball, and, and uh, they wasn't taken out of church at that time. They were in Bible school. Uh, and I could have talked to them about which was worth more, but I didn't have a chance to. And anyway, uh, the, after we'd have two weeks of Bible school, we'd have a night. We'd come in the daytime, two weeks, and then on Friday night, we'd have a, a night letting everybody know what we had done, and the people would come. We'd have a church full to come and hear our programs and all the singing that Gladys had, uh, that Roxy had worked with us. And uh, then uh, uh, during part of this time, I was Associational Vacation Bible School Director. Our team went to Wingate College while all those students were home for Christmas. And we went down and, and just had a, a good time teaching us what the next year's Vacation Bible School literature little Jew would, would be. I was proud of the Bible school we had at Westfield, always. Uh, through almost 90 years, Westfield Baptist Church has been an important part of my life. I'm grateful for the example of the saints who went before us and the support of my church family through the years. I'm still proud of Westfield and the way it is reaching out to the community and to the world. Thank you so much. Uh, I love you, and, and the next time I might not be sitting up, up here. I'll be laying down. But anyway, uh, yeah, you should. Okay, and I see so many of you I hadn't seen in such a long time, and it's such a blessing. A lot of them didn't come. that usually come on Sunday morning because it's Ladies' Day. And they didn't want to come and hear these ladies talk. And so they, they didn't come today. But I'm glad that all of you came that did come. And I've got a big crowd. I've got my grandchildren and my children. All my girls are here. And, uh, and it's so good. Thank you. They came from uh, down below Winston, down near uh, Lexington. So I'm glad that you came today. Uh, they're active in their churches. I tell you what, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Would y'all stand? Yeah. Susan, yes. Listen to Granny now. Now, now this one here on the front is on, is on WS... What is that night station? WSYD every morning. <laughs> They're mad at me. I, my, I, <laughs> But this one in the middle right here, she's on every morning on the television. And so I'm glad that they, they've been good youngins. They've helped me through the years and helped the attendance here at the church. And so that's about it. I'm glad, I'm glad I've had the chance to talk to you again. I didn't, when Joel came and asked me about doing this, he was going to hook up the, the thing up here and, uh, and show me on that. And after I got to thinking about it, you know, all the times I had had a chance to speak to all of you, and I thought, now, I, I think I'd like to do that. So I told Joel, I said, I can do that. I, I can come down there. It's not going to be any problem as long as they don't throw me out of that van. <laughs> and anyway, it's been good. They've been good to me and looked after me all this time. And, 
and and I have been thankful. The Lord is, He is so good, and He answers so many. He's answered so many prayers for me and 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 the Thurman. Uh, it's been it's been a good it's been a good ride. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate that so much that you were able to come and share with us today. We started about two months ago thinking about what Ladies' Day was going to be, and it has evolved over and over. And then this week, I had been away for a few days. When I came back, it had really taken a metamorphosis this week. But we enjoyed that. It was very informative, and we certainly appreciate your coming and being with us today. Um, what had kept going through my mind especially this week when we were preparing for this, was the scripture, Be ye kind one to another. And how we need to, as our mission, to express God's love through our kindness to others each and every day, the ones that we meet. I've been on some mission trips. I've been overseas. I've been to West Virginia. We, the WMU routinely goes to one of the nursing homes in Mount Airy. We've done the medical ministry. But I truly, truly believe that the most important mission that we have as Christians is our day-to-day -day life and what people see us do every day. So as we're celebrating some of these ladies from the, from the past that have been part of the mission of this church, you know, we can look at the driving force behind that, and that is the love of God that is, that's expressed through each and every one of us in the form of the kindness that um, that we are showing to each other. Um, because love is not a feeling, it's an action. And we have to look for opportunities to express God's love through these acts of kindness that we can perform. We hold, or should, must constantly hold at the forefront of our minds and our Lives, the message from John, from Mark, excuse me, it's also in Matthew and Luke, where Jesus said, The first and most important of all the commandments is, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. This is the, ori the origin of Christianity's golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And who among us does not want to be treated with Christian love and kindness? Even in our lesson this week in Sunday school, the word kind was repeated at least three times, we know, when we were reading it this morning. So that has just been what's been foremost in my mind. You know, there's a place in our church for every woman and for every person to serve, to fulfill God's mission. Mary Ellen told you about some of the ways that she did that. You know from the person sitting beside of you or across from you or in front of you how different people fulfill that role. It doesn't have to make a big difference. Um, you know, a small difference some kind, sometimes can make all the difference to a person that's in need. Each of us can be an instrument of God, sometimes inspiring our fellow human being without even knowing it. But God knows. And it's never, ever, ever in God's will for us to be unkind. So look for those opportunities to act with kindness. We each make hundreds of decisions every day, some good and some not so good. But we need to open our hearts and our minds to all the opportunities that arise when we have the chance to act out God's love and God's kindness. When we have when we have the choice, as an individual or as a church, we should always choose to be kind. And that's one choice that we will never regret. You brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> Bible school. Jeff was a little fellow when he started. I had kinder, I guess it's kindergarten, and back there, what, what the kindergarten, I don't know, the nursery, I guess. He must have been three. And the parents thought they had to have a program. You know, all the different classes had to have programs. I said, we can't have a program. They, they don't know how to do anything, you know. So, oh, yes, they had to have a program. Well, I knew who would be singing when I could carry a tune. 
I dreaded it so bad. Oh gosh, I prayed and I even had to take a nerve pill. <laughs> I was I, I knew what was going on and Jeff walked up walked up and down the steps all the time, you know, and I'm wanting to get him. But anyway, we got through it, and, and all of Bible school was good. It was good. They learned a lot. Thank you. I'm going to kind of repeat a little bit of what you said but in your thing, but I, it won't be exactly. I'd like to recognize a strong Christian lady that some of you um, may remember her, but most of you probably don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, you never met her, but her name was Wanda. She loved the Lord, and she came to church when she could, but she had a grown, bedfast, uh, invalid daughter, so she didn't get to do all the, time, all the things she wanted to. Uh, but if you ever went to see her, see, see her daughter, she was a blessing to you. Always smiling, always seemed happy. I don't know, but she always looked that way when you went to see her. Uh, her husband and her son, Wanda's husband and her son, uh, would take turns sometimes on Sunday mornings to let her come to church. Um, but then her husband got cancer, and of course that made it a little more on her to have to look after him, plus her daughter. Uh, then some of our ladies uh, got together, decided um, they would relieve her, take turns relieving uh, her to come to church. So uh, one of the ladies would go on Sunday for worship service and let her come. And uh, that was mission work. And you know, um, the Lord knows everything and he knows how to, he answers our prayers. Maybe not like all, all the time like we want, but he did answer this. And this is about you. Uh, another strong Christian lady, Mary Ellen, found out about uh, the Sunday School Telephone Ministry. This was perfect. It was perfect for Wanda. Now she could stay home, look after her daughter, and teach Sunday School. So she, she was active in church that way. Uh, and her class at that time, of course my mom, I knew more about it because she was in it, uh, they loved her. My mom used to say she could preach. Uh, but anyway, uh, She, uh, not only was she teaching the Sunday school over the telephone, but she would go visit when she could, when she could get out. She'd go visit and make things, like Christmas, she'd make them all something. And um, I, she wanted to see who she was teaching, I think. Some of them she didn't know that well, so she wanted to go to see who she was teaching and to meet them. Uh, and then there was another idea came. Uh, we divide. We got these that we didn't divide, but like couples, we got these couples together, and we would go visit. We took turn, took a family, and we'd go visit them. That was a blessing for us because they were older people that couldn't get out, and um, we would go. And especially we would go uh, during the um, quarter, in in between, before we'd have another you know quarter that we get our books. We would take their Sunday school books to them and other literature that uh, the church had. And um, so that, therefore, we were doing a mission too. Uh, then I'm sure uh, Wanda, she worked hard and she, she started having some health problems. And um, I think this is correct, her, some heart problems. And uh, one night, the Lord came and took her home. And I wondered if, are you ready to go home? If not, we should be, because he could come any time. It could be in the night or in the day, but we need to be ready to go home. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about two different ladies. The first one I did not know from church. We worked together, and I was 22, 23 years old. We were working at Baptist Hospital in the operating room. She worked third shift, and I always had trouble going from first shift to second shift, and then third was just totally bad, but I would always do mine all at one time. 
So I would work seven days straight to get my third shift in so I didn't have to do it as often. And I worked with this lady. She was an excellent nurse. Um, there was nothing that she wouldn't do. There's a lot of them, when you work with them, they won't do stuff if they were the charge nurse. And she was the charge nurse on third. Um, they needed to do paperwork or whatever. She would go, we had a sterile, clean side and a dirty side. She would work on one side one night, I'd work on the other one. The next night we would switch. And she was just like that. She, you know, she was a hands-on, excellent nurse. I loved working with her. She was very dedicated. Um, we didn't talk about church or anything, but it was obvious just talking to her and the way she lived her life in the operating room that she was a Christian lady. And she also taught Sunday school here for many years. The next lady at 86, um, she is still a very loving and kind lady. Um, she's always visiting the sick. Um, if she wasn't able to go and visit you, she was always sending a card. Um, she was very active with the seniors. Um, she would help my parents get in and out. My father was not able to walk very good, and she was always out there helping to get him in and out so he could come and visit with the rest of them and everything. Um, she was always taking, um, bit, when she was visiting, she always took the quarterlies and visiting with everybody, letting them know what was going on and everything at church and just kept everybody up to date with it. Thank you. Haven't we been blessed to have this sweet lady with us this morning in your family? Um, I've heard my husband say many times over these years I've been married with him that it's the men and women of this church that have made such a difference in his life. The role models that they have been in his life, he has said that he wouldn't be the man most likely that he is today. And I'm so proud of him. If it weren't for you and Thurman and so many more families in this church, the rest of us have a lot to live up to. Let me tell you, Mary Ellen, we thank you. As I look out, wasn't sure who was here, but as I look out this morning, I see so many of you women. This is Women's Day. I see so many women here that have meant so much to me in my life. I didn't grow up in this church, but I feel like I've been here forever. I came when I first met Phil, and that's been forever. And so I have grown to love the women of this church so very much. And I thank you for what you have meant to me. There have been times, and this is not written down, there have been times in my life that I've gone out my door, come in from somewhere, and there'd be a can of soup sitting next to my back door. That's the truth. I, there have been times that I've been out, you know, recently with uh, my mom being ill, and I come in, and there would be a chocolate pie sitting on my stove that someone had shared their kindness and their love of the Lord with us. There have been times that I got a phone call years ago, and Joel, Jonathan doesn't know I'm going to share something about him, does he? Love you, Jonathan. I remember, and this dear lady is not here in this service, she was earlier, tells you how much acts of kindness and acts of service mean to you. There's a lady in this church that called me 30-some years ago. Can you believe that? I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was a new mom of a baby girl. 
I had a sweet little boy who was having a really hard time getting used to being in worship service. We had come from the nursery, and he wasn't doing so well. And this was upsetting his mother, and it was really upsetting his father. And love you both. And you know what this dear lady did? She picked up her phone and she called me. Thirty-some years ago, I remember that day. I was so up to here with emotion and the new motherhood and a little boy that wasn't making it through service. And I just was to the point of tears in that phone rang. And we didn't have caller ID then. So I thought, well, something's wrong. Somebody's calling me. I've got to pick up this phone. Well, it was a dear lady in this church. And when she spoke my name, you can know what happened. I just burst into tears. And she thought, you know, what's wrong? I'm sure. Well, probably the only thing I got out was the word Jonathan. And she most likely knew what I was thinking. And you know what she said? She offered the sweetest, kindest words that I've remembered for over 30 years. She said, Kathy, she was probably saying, calm down, get it together. But she said, Kathy, you don't know, we don't know what the Lord's plans are. And, but I can just about tell you that his plans are that Jonathan one day will come to be the leader in the church, the Lord's church. And I will never forget that. Can you imagine 30 some years ago that you remember a little short conversation on an emotional day from a woman in this church? Women, you mean so much to me. I look out, and every one of you, young or old, you mean so much to me. And I thank you for the example that you are to me in my life. And I'm looking for our young people that just sung our girls right here and right here. Do y'all realize the example you are to our, our younger kids at this church? What a ministry you offer to all of us. I just... I just smile inside knowing that you're going to get up and sing. We had the ukulele group this morning. What a ministry that they have. And y'all, to touch so many lives. You are an example to those sweet two little granddaughters of mine. And they're looking to you girls for that role model. As I look out and see the role models that have meant so much to me in my life. So when you get up and you think, hmm, nobody's listening, they're on, I hope they're not on their phones, but whatever, know that you are making a difference in lives. And those young girls are looking to you as role models. You know, as, okay, I'm looking right there. Um, we have the role model of all, and his name is Jesus. You know, women, you mean so much to me. And the reason that you have been role models is because you have showed me and our church and the women of this church Christian love. You've showed us how to love as Christians, how to love as Christian moms. And all that goes on in our lives, I've looked to you and I still will. Jesus was our very perfect example of loving others and serving others. He loved and served unconditionally. That's a big old word, but what an important word it is, to love unconditionally. To me, when I think of Jesus, you know, we think of we could write books of what he means to us, and books have been written. But just a few things that I think of when I think of Jesus. I think of him loving so unconditionally. Didn't matter who in the world it was, who that woman was, who that man was, what they had done in their life. He still loved them. And he showed them that he loved them. We learn and we see 
that when he served, he served right where they were, in those gutters, in their sadness, in their grief. He met them right where they were. That just speaks volumes to me. We see him healing as a healer. You know, he healed people from sicknesses, from illnesses, from leprosy and all these things. But I think he also healed emotionally. That speaks to me right there. He, we see him feeding the hungry. We see him loving us so much that he died on that cross and took my sins on him and your sins and suffered that agony of death for us. And as I think about the women in our church and what it means to me to be a Christian woman at this time in history, it means the very same thing that it did when Jesus was walking this earth. It means to be a servant. He calls us to be servants. He calls us to love unconditionally. He calls us to love as he loved us. And I'm drawn right now to the book of John. Do you ever find scripture that you've read for a zillion years and all of a sudden it comes alive to you? That it, the words just jump off the page and you say, where have I been all my life? Read, hearing this and reading this, that's exactly how I feel right now in my life, reading the book of John. You know what the book of John says. But I'm drawn right today, right now, to the 13th chap chapter of John. It's probably not to what you would think about on a women's day. It's what I'm thinking about. It's what the Lord would have us to think about. I truly, truly believe when we go to the 13th chapter of John, this is the chapter right before um, the Passover or during at the pa time of the Passover. Jesus knew that his time was here, was near, that it was not going to be long until he left this earthly world to be with his heavenly father. You know, I can't imagine, we can't even comprehend all that was going through his mind. But this is what he did, knowing that he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to be denied just within hours. This is what our Lord and Savior did. And I'm just going to read this one verse out of this. John chapter 13 Verse 4. So he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing. He wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. There is no telling in my life how many times I have heard that verse and heard it preached on, heard it, read it, taught it in Sunday school. Never before this time in my life has this verse jumped out at me like it has these last several weeks. Did you catch what he did? This is all I've ever thought. He washed the disciples' feet. We know what's coming. That's not what it's saying to me right now. Yes, he washed the disciples' feet. He took the role of a servant here again. He knelt before them. He washed their feet. The lowliest of jobs. Somebody else would have had that job. But Jesus took it on. And you know what? This is what this is saying to me. He didn't pick and choose whose feet he washed. Y'all, he washed everybody's. It wasn't, 
that he was truly washing their feet. I don't think that's the point. I think, for me, the point is that he was showing God's love. He was taking on that role as a servant. And he humbled himself to wash their feet, to serve these disciples that he, some he knew were going to turn against him. He still loved them. That, right, that verse right there in this chapter has just come alive to me in the last little while in my study. It's like I have never studied this before, like I'd never read it. You know, and when we go on, there's another verse that speaks to me. And I hope sometime today or in the future you'll take time to go back and review this chapter, look at it again and see what it says to you. But it goes on after he's washed their feet and he's dried them and they're there with him. And he says in the 15th verse of chapter 13 of John, I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This is what this is saying to me. And you see my hands, they're pointing to me, not to you. They're pointing to me. They're saying, Kathy, you need to get busy. You need to be doing my work. You need to be serving others. You need to be loving unconditionally. When Jesus washed those disciples' feet, that's about as unconditional to me in a way of showing love that there is. He washed every one of them's feet. You know, and to me, it's just a wake-up call as I read this that I need to be about his work. I need to be about serving him. I need to be about loving others. I need to be about showing those acts of kindness that most of the time don't cost us one thing. I need to be giving of myself because... That's what Jesus did. He's our example. Ladies, I love you so much. And I love the fact that there's room in this world for all of us to serve the Lord. It doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, we sing. I can't carry the tune, but I sing because I love him. But the Lord would have us to serve him not just as women, but all of us. But women, we're talking about women today. The Lord would have us to serve him and to love him with all our heart and with everything in us. And I just think that's the most wonderful thing in the world that, you know, we have this opportunity to somebody who loved us so much to die for us. We have the opportunity to serve him and to love him. And I don't know about you ladies, but I don't want to throw that away. I don't want to waste my time doing things he doesn't want me to do. I don't want to throw away my time and not serve him right here on this earth. You know, I had some other things down in my notes, but there will be another time for that, I hope. I want to leave you with this thought. You know, we in this room are followers of the Lord. That is a huge, he's given us a huge responsibility. He's given us the opportunity that we need to take to serve others and to share his word with other people. And ladies, we're, we can be good at it. And I look out in this room and I see ladies that are good at it. And I just thank you for serving and letting me serve right along beside you. And you know what? I, this is my prayer for all of us, and my fingers are pointing to me, that I will remember this example that Jesus has given us in John to love and to serve no matter what. And that we as individuals will ask God how he would have us to serve 
how he would have us to show kindness to other people. That's my prayer for myself, very selfishly. Lord, show me what you'd have me to do as a Christian woman. But ladies, it's my prayer for you too. Because there is work to do for our Lord and Savior inside these walls. And there's work for us to do outside of these walls. I think we need to put feet. Hook our feet. Get them moving. You know, put our love and put what we know into action. Something came across my computer this week that says love is supposed to be a verb. And it is. Service is a verb also. So my prayer for us as a church, for women of this church, and Mary Ellen, thank you for being the best example, is that we will serve each other in the spirit that the Lord would have us to serve and to be examples that he would have us to be.